Good afternoon learners. I am Dr. Munish Bharadwaj from School of Engineering and Technology. The topic of today's presentation is design of singly reinforced rectangular beams. This topic pertains to your course ET508A which is design of RCC structures. So let's begin the design of singly reinforced rectangular beams. Uh, in last lecture, I told you about the design principles or the basics related to the design of flexural members in which I told you that what is uh, the stress strain diagram of concrete, what is the compressive force, what is the neutral axis, what is the depth of neutral axis from the extreme fiber of the section in concrete area, uh, concrete uh, portion and uh, then I told you uh, that you can find the depth of the rectangular portion of the stress block and that comes out to be 0.43 xu. Now I move forward and in this lecture we will see that what type of problems are there in singly reinforced rectangular beams and how we can solve these problems. So let's come to the type of problems. There are th three type of problems that you will encounter with in design of singly reinforced rectangular beams. First type of problem is to determine the moment of resistance MU when cross section of a beam is known. In this, in this case cross section of the beam will be given to you and you will be asked to determine the moment of resistance. Second type of problem will be when you will be required to determine the steel area in tension when concrete section as well as the applied moments are given to you. Means here MU will be given to you and section of the beam will be given to you but steel area will not be there that you have to find. Third type of problem will be to design a cross section for a bending moment. Means you will be given loading conditions or bending moment and then you will be asked to design the beam. So these are the three type of basic problems that you will encounter in this topic. Now let's take these problems one by one and how to solve these problems. First problem to determine moment of resistance MU when cross section of beam is known. So what we have to do first? First of all we will calculate the depth of neutral axis XU. How we will calculate this? Assume that mm, on application of bending moment MU the strain in the outermost compression fiber of concrete has reached a value of 0.0035 and strain in tensile steel is not less than 0.002 plus Fy divided by 1.15 ES. Where from these two things has come? 0.0035 and 0.002 plus Fy upon 1.15 ES. These are defined in code that strain in the outermost uh, fiber of the concrete will be 0 0.0035 and stress in steel will be 0 0.002 plus Fy upon 1.15 ES. Here Fy is the characteristic strength of steel, 1.15 is the partial factor of safety and ES is Young's modulus for steel. Now. In other words, we can say that the maximum stress in concrete at topmost fiber will be 0 0.045 FCK as I told you last time and stress in tensile steel will be Fy upon 1.15 because when strain in concrete is 0 0.0035 then stress in concrete outermost fiber will be 0 0.45 FCK means these two things are related. Similarly in case of steel when 
this strain is 0 0.002 plus Fy upon 1.15 Es, then corresponding stress will be Fy divided, divided by 1.15, means this is design strength. So design strength in case of concrete will be 0.45 Fck and design strength in case of steel will be Fy upon 1.15. These are the two things from that assumption. Now, if you see this stress strain diagram here, here this is section. B is the width of the section, D is the depth of the section, effective depth of the section. Effective depth means up to the CG of the steel provided there. Otherwise, total depth we generally denote by capital D, which is from this fiber to the bottom most fiber. This, is, this small d is here effective depth, means depth from the topmost fiber to the CG of the steel. AST here is area of steel provided in the beam. Now, you see here dotted line, this dotted line is neutral axis. As you know, neutral axis is that axis or that line at which there is neither compression nor tension. Means strain is zero as well as stress is zero when there is no compression no tension means strain will be zero and corresponding stress will also be zero so you can verify this from this diagram which is a strain diagram in this strain diagram at this point where this dotted line is cutting it this strain is zero similarly at this in this stress diagram this stress is zero so neutral axis is where the stress and stress strain and stress both are zero. Now look at this strain diagram. And in this strain diagram, at the outermost fiber of the concrete, you see here strain is 0 0.0035. Here at the level of steel, the strain is 0 0.002 plus Fy divided by 1.15 Es. Here you see one more figure, number 0 0.002. What is this? This is the strain at the level where up to which this stress block, our stress block is rectangular. This stress, uh, in, in this stress block, the portion up to, uh, the portion which is rectangular up to depth, depth, at that depth, the strain is 0 0.002. This is, this has come from your stress strain diagram of the concrete. Fine. Now, this is XU, means the depth of neutral axis from the topmost fiber of the concrete. Now, here you see these two figures 0.43 XU and 0.57 XU. 0.43 XU is the depth up to which the stress block is rectangular, or this is a straight line. This line is a straight line. Now, how you can get this 0.43 XU? This you can get from these two similar triangles. This bigger, sim bigger triangle where the base is 0 0.0035. In this triangle, this depth is XU. Another triangle is this, base is 0 0.002 and this depth is unknown. So if you, uh, from the si similar triangles, if you try, then you can write 0 0.0035 divided by XU equal to 0 0.002 divided by this unknown depth and if you solve this, this unknown depth will come out to be 0.57 xu and this, this depth you can find xu minus 0.57 xu which will be 0.43 xu. So this is about this stress strain diagram. This stress strain diagram we will use in this analysis. Now this is a strain in a steel and corresponding stress in a steel here is Fy divided by 1.15. This 1.15 is partial factor of safety. Now one more thing here you see C. This is total compressive force. Total compressive resistance or total compressive force of the section. And as you know this is 0.36 Fck Xu. And here you see 0.42 XU. This is the depth 
of the point of application of this C in this section. Means from this topmost fiber up to this C, this depth is 0.4 to XU. Okay. One thing you can notice from here that this 0.42 is slightly less than 0.43. Means you can you can uh, say that this point of application of C lies in this rectangular portion of this stress block because 0.42 is less than 0.43 and this straight line is up to 0.43 XU. Now another thing you see here LA this is liver arm means distance between the two forces here. So between C and T between the point of application of C and T here this is liver arm and this liver arm you can find from this diagram that this depth from extreme fiber of concrete up to this T this depth is a small d effective depth of the beam. If you subtract this LA liver arm from d small d sorry if you subtract 0.42 XU from this small d you can find this liver arm LA means LA will be d minus 0.42 XU. So that way you can find the liver arm. It means the dis distance between the point of application of C and T compressive force and the tensile force. So this stress strain diagram you have in your mind. Now <coughs> We were uh, in the process of finding the depth of neutral axis for the section. So what we will do with that introduction, what we will do for e from equilibrium of horizontal forces on the section because just you have seen that C and T two equal and opposite two forces are acting on the section. Now for equilibrium these two forces has to be same in quantity though their direction is opposite but for equilibrium there should be these two forces should be equal in quantity. So this C should be equal to T total compressive force should be equal to the total tensile force. So if you equate these two forces then you will find this equation 0.36 this is C 0.36 FCK XU into B B is the width of the beam equal to FY upon 1.15 this is stress in uh, steel or the strength of steel into area of steel. So this is C, this is T and this Fy upon 1.15 you can write 0.87. So this becomes 0.87 Fy into AST and from this equation you can write that XU will be equal to 0.87 Fy AST divided by 0.36 FCK B. So this becomes our depth of neutral axis and in this equation Fy is known to you if you know the grade of, con uh, grade of steel, Fck is known to you if you know the grade of concrete, B you know if the section is given to you and AST you know if in that section steel is given to you. So that way you can find the depth of neutral axis because we were in the process of uh, determining the movement of resistance. So for calculation or to find out that movement of resistance this much information is required. Section should be given, steel area should be given, your grade of steel should be given to you, grade of concrete should be given to you. So these will be the known quantities and that way you can find the depth of neutral axis for the section. So this is XU. Now, in analysis, for the analysis purpose, we can make it non-dimensional. Means, if you divide this XU by D, then this will become non-dimensional here. So, XU by D means you are dividing this, this equation, you are dividing by effective depth. So, XU by D will be equal to 0.87 Fy AST divided by 0.36 FCK BD. So that way we can write our depth of neutral axis in the terms of effective depth of the section. Okay. Now, now there will be different cases. 
what different cases that just now we have calculated the depth of neutral axis and you know that for a section depending upon the grade of the steel there is always a limiting depth of neutral axis or maximum depth of neutral axis and you know that that limiting depth of neutral axis depend upon the grade of the steel for FE250, FE415, FE500 this value x u max by d will be different now so what we will do here we will compare this our depth of neutral axis that we have calculated to the limiting depth of neutral axis and based on based on this uh, comparison we will say that whether our section is balanced or under reinforced or over reinforced so there will be three cases so let's take first case in case the depth of neutral axis x u that we have calculated if that comes out to be the limiting depth of neutral axis x u max then this is called the balance section section will be called balance section or we say that depth of neutral axis is equal to the limiting depth of neutral axis or limiting value so for such case how we will calculate the moment of resistance so look at this figure <coughs> this figure is similar to the earlier figure the only difference here is now x u is taken as x u max now here x u is taken as x u max x u is replaced by x u max here in this expression also that uh, depth of the point of application of c 0.4 to x u in place of 0.4 to x u now we are writing here 0.4 to x u max ok so simply we have replaced x u by x u max now keeping in this figure in your mind now as I told you that there are limiting depth of neutral axis now look at this table one here you see that depending upon the grade of steel Fy <coughs> there is limiting depth of neutral axis x u max by d values are given this is given in your code 4456 is 456 code you will find these values so here you see that for Fe 250 this x u max by d is equal to 0.53 for Fe 415 this value is 0.4 d 0.48 and for Fe 500 this value is 0.46 so these are the limiting val uh, values of the limiting depth of neutral axis in terms of x u my x u max by d ok so for such case means for a balance section the moment of resistance we can calculate as compressive force into lever arm compressive force that you know C this is 0.36 FCK XU into B here because this is balance section or the limiting case XU I have replaced by XU max so for always remember that for balance section you will use XU max which is de which depends on the grade of the steel so that x u max will be here just like this fe 250 x u max is 0.53 in d ok so this is the compressive force into lever arm as I told you that lever arm is d minus 0.42 x u here also I have replaced x u by x u max so we can write that 0.3 c x u max divided by d if we take uh, this d out from this bracket if you take d out then in that case 0.36 x u max by d and 1 minus 0.42 x u max by d to b d square f c k ok if you <coughs> if you multiply and divide by d then here you will find this expression so this is our limiting moment of moment resistance moment of resistance mu limiting limiting we are 
saying always because this is the balance section or the limiting case where the x u is equal to x u max. Now, this m u limiting we can find with the help of the tensile force also. So, in that case, the tensile force into lever arm and tensile force as you know F y divided by 1.15 into A S T area of steel into lever arm D minus 0.42 X U max which you can finally write as 0.87 because this will become finally 0.87 0.87 F y A S T into D 1 minus 0.42 X U max by D. Okay. Now if you substitute X U as x u max in our equation 1. Equation 1, what was equation 1? You just look at this. This was the depth of neutral axis. Here, which we found by equating the compressive force to the tensile force. So, in this equation, if you replace this x u by x u max, then equation will be x u max by d will be equal to 0.87 f y s d upon 0.36 f c k b d. Now, what we want to say, this hole for this value of x u max by d, in this equation, you can replace this x u max by d by this whole e expression. Then in that case, this will become 0.87 f y a s t into d, 1 minus 0 0.42 0 0.87 f y a s t upon 0 0.36 f c k b d. If you solve, Finally, you will reach at this expression 0.87 Fy AST into D 1 minus AST Fy upon B D into FCK. So, this is here the another way to find the limiting moment of resistance means using the tensile force. So, I told you two ways to find the limiting moment of resistance means with uh, reference to compressive force and with reference to tensile force. So, either way you can calculate this thing. For tensile force, this is the expression, MU limiting maximum compressive force into lever arm. The final expression becomes like that. And for tensile force, with reference to tensile force, this is maximum tensile force into lever arm and the final expression becomes like this. So, these expressions we can use or you can go by the first principle to find this moment of lim limiting resistance limiting moment of resistance. So, this was the first case when x u was equal to x u max. Second case, this may, this is possible that x u by d is less than x u max by d. This case refers the under reinforced case, under reinforced. And in this case, what happens, look at this uh, diagram. In this strain diagram, you, will see, you see that this is x u max, means limiting depth of neutral axis. Yeah, depth of neutral axis, maximum depth of neutral axis, x u max. This is here. Okay, this is here x u max. But for this case, x u is less than x u max, under reinforced case. Then x u here, you find that this line x u means the actual depth of neutral axis lies above the maximum depth of neutral axis because x u is less than x u max. So, this is now the actual neutral axis whereas, if this would have been the balance case, balance section then in that case, this would have been the neutral axis. So, here you see the difference that x u is less than x u has shifted above the shifted above the x u max means a strain diagram is somewhat little bit different here and here this this will this will the value will be zero the strain value will be zero at a at a depth which is less than the x u max now <coughs> for such case what we will do moment of resistance m u will be less than m u limiting because here the x u is less than x u max and this can be calculated as compressive force into lever arm. That formula will remain same. C into LA. And C here, as you know, 0.36 FCK XU in B 
into d minus 0.4 to xu. This is lever arm. Now here we will be putting the actual depth of neutral axis that we have calculated by equating the two forces C equal to T. By doing C equal to T, whatever value we get for XU, that we will put in this case. Whereas in balance section, if you remember, what I told you, that we will put in place of XU, we will put XU max. So here, this XU is less than XU max, so certainly this moment of resistance will be less than the limiting moment of resistance. And if you substitute the value of xu by d from equation 1 then you will find that xu uh, this mu will be equal to 0.36 fck xu b d 1 minus 0.42 and this value which we have replaced for this and finally if you solve this will come out to be 0.36 xu by d 1 minus ast fy b d fck into b d square into fck so this is the expression when the section is under reinforced section. Here also we can find this uh, moment of resistance with reference to tensile force. Again we will do this tensile force into lever arm. As you, as you can see here T into LA. And T is Fy upon 1.15 AST D minus 0.42 XU. This is lever arm. Here also we will put the actual depth of neutral, neutral axis XU. So, this becomes expression becomes 0.87 Fy AST into D 1 minus 0.42 XU by D. If you substitute value for this neutral axis from equation 1, then finally you will reach at this expression MU equal to 0.87 Fy AST D 1 minus AST Fy B D F C K. So, this is movement of resistance for an under reinforced section. Now, let's take the third case third case is that the value of neutral axis that you calculated this may be greater than x u max there may be some cases means this can occur when your section is over reinforced means you have provided more reinforcement than the required more than the balance section case means over reinforced section means here you are providing more reinforcement than the balance section case Good. so this section is called over reinforced se uh, section and in this case what happens that if we take it or if we calculate the movement of resistance for such section then what happens this section maybe should be changed this we do not require in our design we do not require such type of cases either the section should be designed under reinforced or balance section balance section so always we should avoid such type of things because this violates our assumption of the code which says that maximum strain in tensile reinforcement shall not be less than Fy upon 1.15 ES plus 0.002 because this is over reinforced section and in that case what will happen that uh, uh, this uh, at, at failure our steel will not reach to its ult ultimate strength concrete will crack or crush before the failure of the steel so and in such cases what happens there is a sudden failure of the section which we should always avoid to save the to save the life and as well as the material things that are housed in the building so such section should be avoided now second type of problem Second type of problem, problem in singly reinforced rectangular beam will be to determine the steel area in tension when concrete cross section and applied movements are known. Means you are given the cross section, dimension of the cross section will be given, movement is given, MU, MU is given, then you have to find the AST. So how we how we will move? We will equate 
this mu to our mu limiting. So here mu is 0.87 fy ast d 1 minus ast fy upon bd fck. So you put the value of mu here which is given to you and you can find the ast from here. If the ast is more than the lim limiting tensile steel area AST max means whatever you will calculate from this equation this AST whatever value you will find from here from this equation by simply using this equation you can find the AST means area of the steel and but you have to put a check to that that if the AST calculated from here is more than the limiting tensile steel area AST max which is given here in table 2 that I will show you the section will have to be provided with compression reinforcement as well means here the if your AST is exceeding AST max then the meaning here is that the message here is that you should design your singly reinforced beam than as a doubly reinforced beam means reinforcement should be provided in the compression zone also okay because this case this case this case will become as over reinforced section and over reinforced section is not desired so in that case you should provide the reinforcement in the compression zone also meaning that you should design the beam as a doubly reinforced beam this is the thing so here this is the table which gives the limiting tensile steel for rectangular section here you find the grade of concrete and here you find the grade of steel and for these combinations different values of the percentage of tensile steel which is in the form of the cross section area B into D AST upon B A AST upon BD into 100 that percentage is given here and where from this value comes now this is the question because you cannot you cannot claim that uh, this uh, table so this has come from your equation 1 come back to the equation 1 this is equation 1 x u by d equal to 0.87 fy ast divided by 0.36 fck bd from here from here if you put in it in place of x u if you put x u max okay then this ast will be ast max okay so ast by bd ast by bd this value you can find because x u max you know if you know the grade of steel d is given f y is given if you know the grade of concrete those steel f c k is known to you if you you know the grade of concrete so this fck is known to you fy is known to you xu max is known to you and d is known to you because section is given to you then in that case you can find this value of ast max by bd means that in 200 if you multiply it by 100 then it becomes a percentage in the form of percentage so these values can be obtained for different grade of concrete and different grade of steel for the given section from this formula and that is summarized, summarized here in this table 2 so need not to claim this need not to memorize this you can always calculate this value of limiting tensile steel for rectangular sections from this equation 1 only means that uh, equation which is meant for the calculating your depth of neutral axis which you did for by equating the compressive and the tensile forces now third type of problem which is to design a cross section for a bending moment means bending moment is given to you either the bending moment directly will be given to you or loading will be given to you you can find the bending moment from the formula that you know so for this type of problem what we do uh, for analysis art architectural drawings are 
required to determine the support condition, length and applied load, etc. Means you have to begin with the scratch. Because this is the design problem, total full design problem. So you, for, you have to calculate the loads and the support conditions that what type of loads are there, what type of support conditions are there, what are the effective length of the members. So for that you need the architectural drawings. From architectural drawings you will calculate the effective length, support conditions you will know from there and the, you, you can calculate the loads, dead loads and by knowing that uh, for what purpose the building is meant then you can calc uh, you can uh, be aware of the live loads also right? so all type of loads support conditions and the lines of the members you can calculate or you can uh, know from the architectural drawings so architectural drawings will be required if not given in the form of uh, in the in the question but in your exams this is not needed you will be given the effective length or uh, the total length of the member and the loads so that way you can calculate the bending movement and then move forward you can move forward for the design of the section second thing uh, if you have uh, known these things then for designing a given bending movement means determination of its depth breadth and the reinforcement means design kya hoga? what will be the design design means that you have to calculate this you have to give the section then reinforcement and uh, uh, of course the detailing also of the reinforcement so that will be the part of their design now because uh, you have to start from the sketch so some thumb rules or general rules will be required for this because for calculation of loads you should know some sections because because uh, without knowing the section size of the section you cannot calculate the dead loads so you have to assume some things in advance so there are some general rules, fundamental rules or thumb rules are there to get the approximate sizes of different members. So here first thing that we uh, want to know is the effective length. That how to get the effective length. So code says that for a simply supported beam the effective span is equal to the center to center distance between the supports or clear span plus effective depth of the beam whichever is less so in these two cases whichever is less that will we will take as the effective length for a continuous beam code says that if the width of the support is less than 1 by 12 of the clear span the effective span will be as in case 1 that, that I told you just now otherwise if the supports are wider than the 1 by 12 of the clear span or 600 mm then in that case you have to take the lesser value of the two options here first option for end span with one end fixed and the other continuous or for intermediate spans the effective span shall be clear span between supports first condition second option is for end span with one end free and the other continuous the effective span shall be equal to the clear span plus half the effective depth of the beam or the clear span plus half the width of the continuous support whichever is less. So out of these two options whichever is less that will be taken as the effective length for a continuous beam. Now third thing is that for a member of a frame. So these are the in, uh, these are when our members are uh, individual members but if this if your member forms a part of a uh, part of a frame then in that case case center to center distance should be taken as effective length of the member so this is about the effective length of the member now second thing which we want to assume or know is the size of the section because for calculating the load we should know the size of the section by getting the volume of the material into mul and multiplying it by density you can get the value of the load there so for that you should know the depth also length you just now uh, assumed by the some general rules that are given now for size of the section first of all the depth for depth the thumb rule is that 
D is taken between L effective by 10 and L effective by 20 for all flexible members except cantilevers. Can other than cantilevers, we, we generally take the uh, capital D or the total depth between L effective by 10 and L effective by 20. Okay. Now, for a flexural members, D is estimated between the above limits taking into consideration its support condition, span, loads, material properties, that is factors affecting resisting bend, bending movements. Means because there is a wide range. L by 10, L effective by 10 to L effective by 20, there is a wide range. Then how to, how we should judiciously decide that what should be the value. So these are some factors based, uh, based on which you will decide this value, that what value we should take. So these are the things that support condition, span, load, material properties, etc. These should be taken into consideration to decide that between this range, which, which value should be taken. Second thing is deflection parameter means this L effective by D should be greater than KB, K1, K2, K3 where KB is the basic value that is given in code for different support conditions. K1, K2, K3 are the modification factors. These are given in the code. So KB is the basic value and this is given in the code as 7 for cantilever beams, 20 for simply supported and 26 for continuous beam. K1 is the modification factor which varies as percentage of tensile reinforcement at critical section. You should refer the figure 3 of IS 456. There it is given this modification factor and as this percentage is not known at the outset. Initially we, don't, we do not know the AST. So what should we do? It may be taken equal to the percent percentage required for the limiting movement of resistance. Means limiting movement of resistance clear for balance section for the balance section what is whatever is the AST that AST you can consider here initially. Now means the AST max that I told you and K2 is the modification factor which depends upon percentage of compression reinforcement. You should refer figure 4 for I, uh, from IS 456 for this modification factor. And K3 is a reduction factor for ratio, it is not ration, ratio of span to effective depth for flange beam. This K3 will be used for in case of flange beams. So you should refer, refer the figure 5 of the IS 456. And for this case, applied movement can be taken equal to the limiting movement and by putting this here, what we we want we want the this value of b into d b into d value you can get from this where this x u max upon d is a constant value which depends of the grade of the concrete maximum depth of neutral axis that you know so here everything is known except this bd so bd you, you can get from this equation for b also there are some thumb rules that we will discuss in our next lecture so here, today we have discussed about some uh, problems that what type of problems uh, we face when we go for analysis and design of the singly reinforced rectangular beams. So I hope uh, you must have understood these things and I request you to go through your course material up to this stage if you feel any problem then you can ask these things those problems in the next lecture. Thank you and goodbye.